PAC meeting in Marietta just a few weeks back, and all the candidates got called up to the front of the room. And these guys will tell you it's very interesting. When I got up, there was no chairs for me. The baby boomers and the older generations, my elders were seated before me. And somebody started to make a quote about Ronald Reagan and talking to me about my elders and how I was following the scraps. And I thought to myself, Ronald Reagan cared for the next generation way more than anybody who's handing what I'm getting in my generation. And it's just not worth it. All right, so let's do a little exercise. Arms out. We've been here for an hour. Arms out. Come out. Come on. Jeez, guys. There we go. That's the size of the baby boomer generation. Right there. We watched Super Bowl last week. Did you guys see what they did to my Broncos every three and a half minutes? Get them up. Yeah. Every three and a half minutes. Oh my gosh. That's the size of my generation. Now get that beverage of choice in front of you and get a good drink of it. That's the size of the generation after that. And right now, at the birth rate, according to the United States government, is 1.1. There's not enough kids to cover that. Now, if you take all three of those together, remember having your arms out? It doesn't equal. The tax bases are not there. It's not Democrat problems in Washington, D.C. It's not Republican problems in Washington, D.C. It's a numbers problem. That generation is going to dominate us and rule us from the grave. 1979, they started a Department of Education. Wonderful scenario there. I just got getting ready to graduate high school, I guess it was 1983, uh, getting ready to graduate high school, and I got handed government control, and we've been under government control since then, and part of that government control has gone downhill every time. So we've got an education system now where our teachers are not allowed to teach. They complain about the middles dropping down to the lowers, the lowers, the IEP students and the SST students, that they can't teach because they have to spend 15 minutes with each one of the children. And the system that we've been handed for my generation that's going to the next generation just doesn't work. Financial systems. Oh my gosh, we talked about the debt today. It's enough. CBO predicts that by the time the baby boomers actually get out of control and move out, we'll be at $81 trillion worth of debt. $81 trillion worth of debt. My generation, remember? My generation can't cover it. If our tax base is even half of that, we can't cover it. Remember that cup? They can't cover it. With a birth rate of 1.1, the ones after that can't cover it. The polarizing positions in Washington, D.C. have led us to a condition where nobody can leave their comfort zone. There's not one individual that's held in office, been in office, that has screamed to the top of the State of the Union address. Beautiful State of the Union address. Did anybody hear anything about the next generation and what we're taking care of for the next generation? No, it was all about current partisan politics, what's going on in Washington, D.C., and how the president is leading half the country and destroying generations. Destroying generations. There's no good that will come from that. If you think there's distrust in the government now, imagine what it's going to be like two generations down the road. When these individuals look up there and go, okay, they've led us here. Here we are. We're being ruled from the grave. Right now, we can't even fly planes over our soldiers who die overseas because we haven't got the fuel for it. It's not allowed. Imagine what it's going to be like 20 years from now. How many liberties I'm going to lose. How many liberties my children are going to lose. And how much freedom we're going to lose because, oh, we had to make those decisions because of the debt. They shouldn't be arguing about how the debt should be increased. They should be arguing how it should be shrunk. And it doesn't matter the protocol to get there. You know, Social Security, big issue. Uh, Medicare, Medicaid, big issue. Those are all the issues for the generation, and they forgot that the Constitution is not for a generation. It's for the life of the country. It is for the life of the country. Thomas Jefferson said, beware of the dead hands of the past. They're here now. Our liberties are being cost right now. As decisions that we could be making in our government are going to be limited by what we're paying for to cover interest on the debt. No good shall come of that. So, <laughs> get them out there again. Baby boomers. Had to have a size of government to cover their generation. Built empires. Got wonderful Department of Education that gave us, well, what was it? Common Core. You guys know what we just did right here? Does everybody kind of agree with where we're at right now? We just did more than Common Core was able to do. We talked about entire generations. We took a test. Everybody was shaking their heads. And it didn't take government intervention or a government program to get that education done right here. That's more than Common Core is scheduled to do right now. So I've got a vested interest in this. I've got a real vested interest in this. Some of you have researched this. Some of you have. But 
soldier, veteran, uh, husband. She's not here today, forgive me. She's delivered, just delivered two children in Iowa. Young lady on the USS Nimitz, her husband died. They had to have some place for the kids. So we took the kids in, so she delivered them back to Iowa. They just had their home company. So uh, Santa's not here today, otherwise she'd be here. But there's over 150 children that can call me dad. There's not too many guys that can say that. We ran a foster group home for 15 years. I have to recognize Ann and Bob. Bob covered me from the IRS when they were harassing me 20 years ago, giving me all kinds of pain. Ed was in House Bill 222, which we changed, and I say we, because House Bill 222 initiated in my home in the state of Georgia, and I wasn't in office. It was because of Tom Rollins, the state child advocate, and what was going on with the corruption in DHR that initiated House Bill 228 and Senate Bill 222 that reorganized the state of Georgia. That fight came from a home from a citizen, not an elected official. So, we talk about experience. Everybody talking about experience. Nuclear industry. I worked in the nuclear industry worldwide. Nuclear sites, per se. Also got to do the deconstruction and decommissioning of some of the nuclear warheads. Very interesting business. That's Westinghouse Nuclear Services Division. The advanced photon source at Argonne National Labs. Anybody ever hear of that? That's pretty neat work. It's where they did, oh, there we go. We have one back there. The advanced photon source is where we do research for radical cells for cancer. Elmo Electronics in Silicon Valley, I got to work with those guys. They even got their name on the Mars Project, but I don't know what we did, but we even got our name on the Mars Project. But with all the countries that I've traveled to around the world and what I do inside the United States working with education, University of Southern California, University of Chicago, Harvard, on down the line, I want to take that to Washington, D.C. because I've got something interesting that none of these other guys are going to have for you. First of all, I'm a Generation Xer. And I've suffered through this economy. I've been unemployed twice. My family went to the brink. Not a lawyer, not a doctor, working guy. In fact, I'm working right now, so you're not going to see me on the campaign trail here and there. You're going to see me during the weekends because I'm working on the border of McAllen, Texas, with my son flying in the air with boots in the air for the Georgia National Guard. I'm on the ground. He's covering me. We're looking at immigration firsthand. We're working with the Mexican Marines, Mexican Army, firsthand. And I'll tell you guys what you see in the news, the polarizing positions you see, it's not true. One of the most devastating stories we get from the Mexican guys is they've got mass graves on their side down there. I don't know if it's true or not, but that's what they're telling me, that people don't even make it through the desert. They die getting over here. They tell me stories while we're sitting around the table. One of them was about the Chinese guy that has pregnant wife with me, with him, trying to get him across the border because he couldn't get the permit for his second child. Now regardless of what you think about immigration, we are a compassionate country. My sister, her husband's from Sydney, Australia. He took the test, did everything the right way. My brother, his wife, is from Lima, Peru. She did it the right way. Eugene's correct. People that did it the right way, especially the ones I'm working with in McAllen, Texas, on the border, are more angry than anybody else that they look at this problem because they think this amnesty thing is going to shortcut them because they did it the right way and somebody else is going to come in and mess it up. It's not going to happen. But keep in mind, we are the most compassionate country out there. We have to have the ability to take in those individuals that are weak, that do need us, that we can set an example in the world of compassion and of leadership that nobody else can set. You think China's going to set that? It is not going to happen on their watch. It will happen on our watch. So as we look through this, yes, additional research will be required. So we'll play with this a little bit. Unemployed, not a doctor, not a lawyer, nuclear experience, education experience, the entire state of Utah, the entire state of Colorado, I did the entire education programs for both states. I'm working with the education program in Texas right now. One of the things I shot up to the House and got killed in committee was the Vision Bridge School Bill. This is kind of interesting. If you have an IEP student or SST student and they're not doing well in the class, you can assign them a special tutor as long as the state agrees to pay the daily rate to private business. Ombudsman, Huntington, Sylvan, and those tutors take those kids individually and they still get credit for it and still get attendance for it, but it eliminates that trouble from the classroom for the teacher and allows for the middles to go up to the high and the high students to proceed even further. <coughs> those kind of ideas, those new ideas, everybody's had opportunities to bring those up there. My generation wants to be heard. I want you to join a cause because there's an opportunity 
to create a cause here and a movement throughout the United States that's going to happen in North Georgia, the most conservative area in the United States. And when it happens here, the rest of the individuals in the United States will see this and they may move on it, especially in my generation, which will be the forgotten generation if we don't. You take an individual, you support this individual, and you send me to Washington, D.C., and my generation is going to scream at the top of their lungs that we don't want to be ruled from the grave, regardless of the program or the situation. And it'll be the tip of the spear. More individuals of my generation will be convinced to run for office because we will see that these people right here, they'll support each other, they'll endorse each other, they'll give each other money because they know that when we start getting in the office, that gravy train's going to end because we have a vested interest in our future, not keeping the checks coming until we're ruled from the grave. You start the movement here, and it'll catch on throughout the United States. The movement will continue, and we will have an opportunity to challenge the positions in Washington, D.C. that are polarizing, and we will create comfort zones for those individuals to get out of those positions. Now, that's very interesting, very theological. If you're going to have to go check numbers, I'm sure you're all going to look at it. But does anybody in here believe that baby boomers are leaving my generation in good condition? Anyone? Does anybody believe they're leaving the generation after mine in good condition? Does anybody believe that they have pretty enough opportunity to do something about this, and they did? It's absolutely not. The opportunity has been missed. And regardless of what you're hearing, it's going to take somebody with skin in the game to change this. Now, if you go to the website, Hayden for the House, you'll find that I'm a fair tax guy. I was on fair tax radio, broadcasted everywhere. It happens. Fair tax may be the solution to have some of these baby boomers take the debt with them when they go. And then the most amazing thing on the planet may happen in the United States that hasn't happened before. Right now, 40, what, 47, 48% of us are paying federal taxes. Imagine what it would be like if every United States citizen had skin in the game, government would change overnight. If everybody had skin in the game, regardless of their position and where they are in the United States, if they all paid equal taxes under a consumption tax, everyone would have skin in the game and everyone would be paying attention to the government. It wouldn't just be a small group of individuals here and there. It wouldn't be political packs. It wouldn't be parties. It would be everyone. And then that would change overnight. Once that fair tax changes and the money starts flowing in, the ability to cut, shrink, whatever you want to do to adjust the size of government for my generation and for the next generation can be done there with new ideas. It will not be done with the generation that's in charge. <coughs> Eight minutes, I tell you what, let's open it up. I think I'll beat you guys into, oh please.